opened the Astrodome, the top was not opaque. It was glass, and it was clear, and the idea was we'll have natural grass down here, and the sun will come through, the grass will grow, and it will just be protected from the elements when you play a ball game, okay? But the grass would not grow in that environment, and they didn't know what to do. They finally had to paint over the glass, and then, of course, the grass would not grow, so they brought in an artificial uh, material known as AstroTurf, as in AstroDome. Wow, that is that is fascinating. I didn't Turf. realize that. Because, yeah. you know, they say dirt covers the floors now and mold is creeping up the walls and the grass won't grow. It really sounds like my house. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with me that in general, in politics or in interviews and crime scenes or whatever else, the first thing someone tells you right off the cuff is probably the closest to the truth you're going to get. Yes. And when stories change, there are forces at work, sinister or otherwise. Yes, but at the same time, I think, uh, while we're focusing on the witness statements and such, I think we also need to remember, uh, you know, the first thing they said was they were going to charge him with manslaughter. That this whole thing was avoidable if he had stayed in his Well, that's undeniable. Right, but but people are focusing on switching stories like it's Trayvon's fan. You know, well, yeah. wait a minute, but why would you switch stories? What you saw is what you saw. Uh, why do people do it in politics? Why do you make promises? Because that you people yes, get to you. Know you're not because Thank people you. get to you. Thank you. They people, get to that you. That doesn't change the facts of the case. No, it doesn't. But we, you know, but but if witnesses are changing stories, it's going to completely then undermine their credibility. Well, absolutely, and it should. Here's a. Uh,